Today's wonderful sponsor is Property Assist WA. Shannon and her team are really committed to assisting property managers' workload by assisting them with outsourcing services like routine inspections, final bond inspections, and property condition reports. Keep your property managers doing what they love and outsource the things they don't to a company that thrives on positive feedback and guarantees a premium personalised service with a smile. The vision of Property Assist WA is to make a difference to the quality and perception of property managers, enabling you to keep your clients happy whilst improving the efficiency of your staff. So I'm really excited today to have a new guest who I haven't met before, but I follow on social media and vice versa, and that is Ashby from White Art. Welcome, Ashby. Hi, thanks for having me. Very exciting. Now, you are Perth-based, that's yes. right, isn't it? Yep, excellent. And um, I, for those that are listening, I'm getting to know you as well. And um, just before I hit record, I said, don't tell me anything because you're only going to have to repeat it twice. So if you can just go through with me, tell me a little bit about um, your, like where you've been in your career and where you are now, because you've got a really cool, um, what I would call like an uber cool agency um, from the public looking in. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing a bit more about it. Ah, an uber cool agency. That's a bit of a compliment, you know, but we know nowadays everything's a bit of a mirage. Um, you know, we do our best, but it is, um, uh, well, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have partners actually in branding. So when you talk about the uber cool ma uh, agency and everything you see created, it's all done by her. She owns a branding agency. Hmm? That explains a lot. That explains a lot. Yes. So she owns a branding agency. So from the moment I decided that, okay, I've been in real estate 10 years, um, uh, it's time for me to do my own thing. Um, and so that was uh, about two and a half years ago. Um, you know, I was able to hit the ground running. I didn't have to do, which is quite scary for a lot of people when when they want to start their own agency, where you're going to get your brand, your brand identity, um, you know, websites, um, you know, digital content, you know, all that stuff. Um, she was already doing it for me as a standalone sales agent. Um, and then all we had to do was kind of rebrand it for um, sales, um, office ownership kind of point of view. So I was really lucky in, in that sense, yeah. Yeah, okay. So from a sales background and then you decide next step is to have your own agency, did you always start off by just doing sales? Did you always have an interest in eventually growing the property management or is that something that's just become a bit of a byproduct? Um, I would say the I've, I've always enjoyed sales because I've always enjoyed property and purchasing property um, for myself and then also uh, um, uh, getting to view a lot of different types of property, you know, getting hands-on with different different you know, uh, types of apartments or houses or whatever it might be. So sales has always been my bread and butter, but kind of over the years I've always fallen into a little bit of a property management role, not property management per se, but like BDM kind of role um, at different agencies or just helping where I can. Um, I've always worked at boutique agencies and I'm sure you know, it, it can sometimes be all hands on deck. So I, I over the years... Um, have gained an understanding of property management just from helping where I could. Um, obviously, uh, well, one one office I worked at, um, I I helped build their rent roll. Um, you know, almost to what it, what it is today before I moved on. Um, and you know, at the previous office I worked at before I started White Arch, um, you know, obviously COVID happened and people were getting sick and all sorts of things. So anytime I could help, you know, do inspections or whatever it was, I was more than willing to do it because they took care of me. So I made sure to help them. So then just the natural understanding of it um, and then appreciation of it and then also an appreciation of what it can provide from a business standpoint um, is kind of how I ended up where I am, where now I do both. Yeah, amazing. Because it's it's very much the a real sense of the word real estate agent when you are looking after the whole process or not necessarily saying that you you know you're focusing on property management or sales, but you're able to help um, help the client um, in in all aspects, which is um, definitely a true sense. I never used to pay too much attention to the actual words that we use 
um, in our business until I heard um, another real estate agent talking about it and explaining it to someone um, on TikTok. And she was saying how the word, you know, real estate agent is someone who, you know, has their license and, um, you know, all of has done that extra training. And then how sales rep is someone who's just doing sales and then property manager, someone just doing property management. And it was weird because after all these years, I'd never paid much attention to the actual words that we use and what yes. that entails us um, the ability to do. So I guess real estate agent means that we really can cover all aspects, I believe. And then, yes, yeah, sales rep, you're in a lane and property management, you're in a lane. Yes. Now, I can't go past asking this question, and I hope it's okay to ask. White Arch. (laughs) Now, I love the name, but I also, I have to come back to White Fox because White Fox is uh, one of my favourite brands around. I like, I love them. I love they're in Perth. Do you get a lot of, like, people, like, comparing you? Oh, not really. I mean, I had a few people saying, oh, I didn't know... um... Well, they you, they would say White Arch is in Perth, and I mean I would say oh, I think you mean White Fox. Um, yeah, no, not not really. Maybe it'll happen more now, especially um, obviously because I've got office in Perth now, and um, a couple of those guys I know them quite well. I know David very very well, um, and I know Ryan quite a long time. Um, but David pretty much runs North Perth, which is where my office is. You know, I think he's probably one of the best sellers here. Um, we run in different lanes when it comes to what we actually sell, but, um, you know, him being around with his new brand, maybe people will get us confused. Uh, but no, I haven't had, actually had that much of that yet. I think just cause they haven't been here. Um, but white arch, how it came about actually nothing to do with white Fox, yes. um, but essentially a piece of paper and a pen and we're writing down, you know, colors. I liked shapes. I liked, um, animals. I liked just words right, in general, and then we're just putting them kind of together until we found something that we felt um, sounded good. And, I mean, there is a bit of truth in in white arch. So uh, uh, an arch is my favourite architectural feature in a home. And white, um, uh, if you want to look at it, go to Crib Creative. Our house was just posted on Crib Creative yesterday, and it's, like, white everywhere. Um, So, like, white is our, you know, favourite colour. I would say. Um, so that's how we got to White Arch. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to be, you know, like White Arch Property or um, White Arch um, Sales Group or one of those. I just wanted to be White Arch. And then hopefully one day people will know White Arch is a real estate firm. Right now people go, what's White Arch? But that's okay. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah, it's that's um, something that when we had a business consultant, and this is a little bit of a, um, I guess, a lesson to those that maybe are looking at starting their own agency and, you know, the name is the first thing you do. But I do remember originally we were Mackenzie Ivanhoe Realtors and that was just, you know, as, as you do, yeah, take your that you know surnames from each um each business partner like obviously I'm in business with my brother-in-law um Ivanhoe was my maiden name and then um you know as time goes on those things change so when we got a business consultant a long time ago he had told us to um pick a four-letter word that didn't mean anything and very similar to sort of what you're suggesting with white art where it's just standalone um SoCo it, it we probably added on realty, but SoCo was obviously meant um, as a logo was meant to be on its own. We don't have any property or realty under under that. It happens um, naturally. But, yeah, but very similar. Everyone to like, adds on realty or property for you. <laughs> they do, they do. But like very similar, like my business consultant at the time had sort of said things like, you know, Coles, Qantas, like those names, you know that Coles is referring oh. to a shopping centre, Qantas is an airline, White Arch is property, like that's the point that you want to sort of aim to. Obviously, that's on a much larger scale, but you get the idea of the concept. Yeah, it's exactly what I was thinking because, you know, I was thinking about good brands in Perth. I know we're in a bit of a bubble real estate agent, so we know all of them and maybe we that's how we think of them. But, you know, real mark is real mark, Acton is Acton. Even Porteous is just like Porteous and people know it's real estate, you know. Um, Ray White's Ray White. And I know technically Ray White's, you know, Ray White Property Group or Ray White Realty, but, you know, people just call them Ray White. Um, even like Vivian's office in that's a Ray White, they just be like, oh, Vivian's. Like, you know, like so um, that's kind of why we 
decided to drop all the other stuff. And then also if we choose to do other things, not that we have any plans for that, but if we choose to do other things, we can attach the name to it and things like well, that. Well, exactly. Um, like, you know, if you were to go into like more like mar- like as a marketing agency or into uh, merchandise or whatever, then you've got all those um, or hiring. Like, we do have merch say. if anyone wants any. Well, what, what do you have? <laughs> we do have merch. Just call me. I send it to people. So. I, I absolutely can see that you got merch. How do you, so can we just keep on going on this business side of things? How because there's a lot of people that maybe have been thinking of, you know, um, starting a business or maybe wanting to refresh yep. their brand with merch. I mean, and I, I'm a huge fan of your T-shirt, those that can't see Ashby's T-shirt. It's just simple. It's just got the simple white arch on the front. And I saw a reel that you did the other day and mm. um, it must have been an old one that you did with you're wearing a suit and maybe a tie and you oh. thing about how, like, no, you don't wear suits anymore or how times have changed. Yeah, it's probably an old one, yeah, yeah. It was an old one that you were referring to because, you know, we've gone from the times of having to wear the suit and now it's just a, a plain white T-shirt, very simple. Um, yeah. And, you know, so let's talk about the merch that and how you use it and what you've got because I think people will find that quite interesting. But if you could also um, talk to me sort of about, like, you know, that transition from going from that yeah. formal attire and then going, you know what, I'm – like this is who I am. I'm a t-shirt type of guy, assuming that's what you are, and that is going to work in my best interest. So um, we'll start on that point. So I love suits. I have a closet full of suits, like a lot of suits. Um, I have fun colours. I have stripes. I have everything, everything under the sun. I always wore suits. When you start, when I started real estate ten years ago, not that long, but it was very different. You, you know, we've had a lot of change in the last decade. We've had a lot of change in the last three, four years, 10 years ago, everyone in the office, suit, tie, you know, like a boring suit, boring tie and a white shirt or a blue shirt if you were like a bit flamboyant. Um, So that's what everyone wore. Even I remember one of our like coaching courses, it was like you should wear red ties, you know, because they're power ties or whatever. So anyways, suit, tie, and then as the years progress, all of a sudden people drop the tie and it became suit and collared shirt. And then people started dropping the suit pants and started wearing chinos. And, yeah, I think just through probably through social media and people wanting to um, be more in line with their clientele. And as millennials became more of the buying power, um, you know, the suit kind of fell out of love. Now, I still wear suits um, a few times a week but I pair it with a T-shirt now. Um, you know, some people say that's weird, but I think it looks all right. I like it. And it's got my brand on it. So, I like, any time it's got your brand on it, I consider it a uniform so no one can say anything. Um, so, yeah, so I still do wear suits. Um, uh, but um, now I pair it with, like, a T-shirt. I wear less button-ups. And it also could be just because I'm getting a little bit bigger around the waist and, and a button-up is uh, they're harder to, uh, to fit into nowadays. Um, so that's... That's that's how we got to that. Hold on. Can we just hold that moment? Because my partner was looking at shirts the other day and I said, when he saw it, I said to him, actually, I don't think that's an Australian brand. I think it's a US brand. It was a shirt that had yeah. a zip, that was a zip shirt, but still with the button look so that you didn't get that button pull. And ah, I said, yeah. I think I saw that on Instagram. Yes. I, could, I couldn't bring myself to do that. That's like... It's like having Velcro shoes as a grown-up. Like, it's just like... I I'll make him listen to this and hear that. Yeah. That's, yeah, tell him that's my opinion on it. He doesn't have to listen, but I think it's it's the equivalent of Velcro shoes on a grown-up. Got it. I'm going to pass that on. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that's how we got to um, merch. And the merch thing, merch is great. Everyone should have merch. I do merch a little bit differently. Um, I just give my merch away. Yeah. So it's not it is a brand tool but it's more just something that I enjoy I love my brand I love the way it looks people saw my sweaters when I first got them and when I say I Tineal my partner organized it all so she got me all this merch and I was wearing it and people like oh that looks good I would love one and like how much and then I was like oh I'm, I'm not really in the business of selling clothes that would be just another headache I'd have to worry about why don't I just order a bunch and just give it away so pretty much a couple of times a year, I just order a bunch of merch and then I ask people on social media who wants it and I just give it away. 
um, hopefully they're in my core area and they wear it around, which a few people, you know, they're down at the coffee shop or whatever and say, oh, I saw your jumper. That's kind of it. It's just a bit of fun. It's not, it's not like I'm giving away a thousand T-shirts, you know, maybe 50 to 100 different items of clothing, but, you know, it's fun. That's it. And then I just wear it every day. Yeah, so you've got T-shirt, jumper, cap. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Associates Co. provide reliable, fully trained professionals to assist you with running and scaling your property management department, providing high-quality, pre-trained virtual assistants ready to hit the ground running and revolutionise the way you run your portfolio, ensuring your time is spent doing the high-value tasks inside your rent roll that really matter. Not long ago, VAs within a business were considered a luxury. Now they are a staple for any business needing reliable support without the headache of traditional staffing. To find out more, head over to theassociatesco.com. I had caps, I just, whatever people want. I had someone ask for a mug, um, yeah. so I got them a mug. Someone, someone wanted a, uh, what do you call it, that, the okay. bonnet hat. Hmm? Uh, like I was going to say, you know what would be cool? I can see you having a bucket hat. Yeah, bucket hat. Someone wanted a bucket hat. Yeah. Um, someone wanted a um, beanie. Like, a, just, yeah, whatever we've got. And then also at the same time, I order a bunch of merch. Well, not merch, but um, items that, branded items from the same place that go into our gift boxes for sales anyway. So it's kind of kill two birds, one stone. You know, if I know someone's got a kid or they've just had a baby, I'll give them I can't remember what these are called, a onesie, yep. like a baby's onesie, you know, in their gift pack. Um, yeah, just fun stuff, the, you know, yeah, yeah. details, whatever. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's, it's good just for people to hear that and know sort of what other agencies are doing when it comes to merch. I mean, and it, it's it makes sense, like, you know, having high, you know, buying a heap of T-shirts, for example. Obviously, you have to have a pretty cool brand like Wide Arch, so make sure you go over and have a look at the Instagram and see that. Yeah, but you can, you can like, anyone's brand, you know, you can get someone, you know, you've got all these options now. You can go to Canberra or whatever it is, and you could go, okay, I've got my logo, but I want to do some merch, and so I want to jazz it up, and you can get someone to make, like, a, a you know, a fun logo, or do your, you know, if you've got a, a company quote or something. Uh, just for me with like with it, it was more just about in having fun with people that supported me. And part big part of it was, you know, just you guys have supported me. A lot of people gave me property management or whatever. And it was just like, hey, look, I know it's only a jumper, but, you know, it's fun to put a smile on their face for the day. And that was all it was. Yeah. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah, amazing. I don't think um, like an LJ Hooker logo on the front of a T-shirt will have the same interest as what yours would be. I'm sure someone could make it look good. But, yeah, I am lucky because my colour palette is like super neutral. Yeah. So they're white and I'm gonna. these are not the correct colours. There's a branding guideline, but we're going to go, well, they're white and like a charcoal black. Yeah. Okay. And that's for sales and property management is like this nudie, um, it's not pink, but it's like a, yeah, it's like a nude colour yep. and the, the opposite black. So the colours are pretty neutral, so it's pretty easy to slap it onto like any jumper. It's not, you yeah. know, you don't have to, un- like red or white, their branding right now is phenomenal, but, y- you know, like a bright yellow jumper might be like a pretty hectic, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, very much. Um, yeah, canary is the word that comes to mind. <laughs> so. yeah. um, now you your property management um, side of things, if we could just touch on that, um, yeah. would you, would it, from a size point of view, don't give me numbers, but sort of under 200 or over 200? Yeah, yeah, no, under, under. Under 200, great. Um, and have you found that that's just organically grown as a byproduct or have you been actively um, working on building a property management department? Uh, I, when I started, it was a big point of mine. Well, part of why I wanted to do it is I was, kind of sick of giving property managements to an agency. Um, look, the reality is, um, you know, that if you can, if you're capable and you can run it, that is money that could be in your pocket working for you efficiently, right? So overheads, whatever it is, however you want to run your business. And obviously as a salesperson over, I, I worked at, I would say I've, I've worked for four different agencies before selling my own thing. I would say only Two of those I actually 
was in real estate. Like the other two, I was, you know, floundering. I didn't know, you know, I wasn't good, right? So, but those two agencies, I gave them a lot of business and they treated me very well, but that was business that if I ever left, it stayed there. And unless you're really, really good at your follow-ups, uh, you're probably going to lose those sales to that agency that you left them at, you know, or at least it will go to someone else because you're going to lose connection with them. Um, so, yeah, so one of the big things for me was, you know, the, was to have it in-house because um, they're, especially the way I, I do things is I like to be really hands-on with all my clients. So, um Every single client is super important to me. So every single client on my rent roll is um, someone that I deal with on a regular occurrence. And, um, yeah, I wanted to make sure that they were getting what they needed, if that makes sense. So from day one, there was a long way to, long-winded way to say from day one, my focus was getting my clients that had investment properties inside of my business so that I could make sure that they you know, were getting what they needed. And are you looking after them yourself at the moment? Do you have some um, a property manager, like an in-person property manager, or you just got sort of more outsourced or, you know, um, offshore support? Yeah, so no, I don't. I look at it after it by myself. Um, when I started, obviously, I knew that I had to keep doing sales because that's my bread and butter. So I had to um, immediately figure out some systems. So obviously, I outsource my inspections, routines, and property condition reports and final bonds. They are done by Property Assist, who's amazing. I know you know them. Um, and I now probably probably a year in, I got a virtual assistant. Yeah. And so she does all my admin. She's amazing, which just means that I can do less busy work and focus more on um, client-facing work. Yeah, uh, and, and any little, um, you know, spot fires or things like that that come up, you can sort of handle them. Obviously, you can't outsource yes. that. Yes. Do you, I, um, from a business point of view, I think it's really fascinating to see different people. To, everyone has a different business plan. I know mm-hmm. agencies where they have a their business plan is to have all in person support. I know other businesses that literally have, you know, one one property manager and a whole team of VAs and 600 properties because that's yeah. their business plan is to have it more um, set up like that. Um, so I love um, I love sharing and people to share yeah. different ways of running the business to keep people open to other ways that can actually work for you. And there's absolutely no right or wrong with it, whether you want a team of um, VAs or whether you want a team in person. Like it's literally whatever you feel comfortable doing. So with your current setup, um, do you feel, um, there's two questions, I guess, do you feel that they're like, there's a number in mind that you would get someone in or would you um, or do you think like a offshore team is potentially the future like and do you have like do you have enough capacity um, with what you've got now in terms of help to continue growing without getting anyone else in? Yeah so um, when I originally started the idea was always behind having admin support directly to me and then maybe one property manager. So it was going to be, my first step was going to be admin support. I would handle it until it got to a certain size. Size was to be confirmed. Um, And then property management, property manager, right, with that person. So very traditional, right? Um, Part of that was that, especially because I knew a lot of these initial clients were going to be people that I've dealt with for many years. And a lot of the complaints in the industry uh, that property management turnover is so high and they, you know, they're not dealing with the same person. So I wanted to kind of limit that in the early stages as much as I could, um, just because I knew that the clients, every single one of them were people that had supported me, some of them up to a decade. So that was really important to me. That's kind of changed. The business obviously got to a point where I felt like I was, um, I was too busy to, to work efficiently. So I had to bring in the virtual assistant right, to take some of the busy work away. So now that I've got Christine, um, everything runs a lot smoother. And so now probably I will bring in straight away a property manager. Yeah. Right. And then I will build the property management division and then build admin around that um, that, that way. 
I don't think I'll need as many property managers as some other agencies. I run a trustless property management division, so we don't have we don't we don't use trustless software. What um software do you use? We use Manage that. Ah, okay. Yeah, so I th- it's my opinion. I think most platforms will go that way. I think managed apps really good, but their issue is going to be that their platform is built for being trustless, and then they're building the property management software alongside that. So the trustless software is really good, but then now there's you know, we got to there's manual tasks that we have to do that, like if I used Property Me, which I've used in the past, I wouldn't have to do. Yeah. So their challenge is going to be, you know, if Property Me starts to bring in this service and Property Tree and all of that, because they've already got really good platforms. Um, but yeah, so that cuts down a lot of um, admin work that me as a licensee has has to do. You know, yeah. Things like that. I still obviously have to do bonds, but other than that, it's all trustless. Yeah, I am. Um, I always say to everyone, like getting the process first and getting the VA in first and all of that before getting the people, I think is really important because they're going to be a, a, such a support for that property manager yes. come in. Um, and I think people sometimes do it the wrong way around. They think that they need the property manager first, but in fact, they actually need the processes and all of that set up. Um, and I want you to be hands on as well. Like once I got, I need to understand it, right? The reality is yeah. as much as I tinkered in property management and did a bit of BDM work, I really needed as a licensee to spend some time getting a grasp on all the different things. And we're lucky because the much more than sales property managers are much more willing to help, you know, from other offices. So I've had people that I can call um, that will you know, say, oh, you do this, Ash, do this, you know, um, get this form, send this, do it in this order. Um, but I needed to have that first so that I could build it in a way that I wanted my company to function and then I can actually have those processes for the property manager that comes in instead of having a property manager come in that's got experience and then does it in a particular way but maybe it's not in line with how I wanted to do White Arch. Yeah, so important. Like the number of um, sales led directors having property management departments and um, not um, wanting the benefits of the rent role, but also very quick to put the blame on the property manager, not um, understanding the department enough. And they can actually sometimes there's two ways that sales led directors, um, well, what can happen with sales led directors, they can either be bullied and pressured from a property manager because, you know, potentially the director doesn't know what they're talking about in property management. So they've sort of left with a property manager who's maybe quite dominating, said, well, we need this, we need that. And the director doesn't know. So they just go, sure, whatever keeps you happy. So you've got that problem. Um, but then you've also got um, the problem of the um, director not understanding enough and not um, interested in putting in the right um technology and all of that procedures for the property manager. So it can become a very toxic um, circle if the directors who have got that sales experience don't have a good understanding. So it's so lovely to hear that you've got, you know, you've at least made the effort to have that understanding, um, you know, in the property management so that you can grow and your business will grow so much easier um, and more controlled because. Yeah, well, I can't expect. I can't expect someone to come in and work with me uh, and if I have no understanding of what they're doing or what they're asking. Yeah. So, you know, it would just, yeah, it just seems crazy to me that someone would, you know, I'd come and I'd be like, okay, this is the property portfolio and I want you to manage it and make sure nothing goes wrong. Yeah. I have no idea what you do. You just tell me what you need and sometimes I'll say yes and sometimes I won't. Yeah. Right? At least if they if I do have someone come in and they're asking for things, I'm educated on to an extent yeah. Um, yeah. on um, why they might be asking. I can make slightly a more informed decision on whether or not they need that, and we can have a dialogue about it. It's, you know, so, um, you know, and at the end of the day, it's quite cautious. I read a lot um, about these horror stories <laughs> about different things happening money being taken from trusts, property managers doing ter- bad things, licensees doing terrible things. 
Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's always like the buck stops with the licensee. sea. And so I'm trying to limit that as much as I can because if I can understand it, then, you know, if something does go wrong, it's probably because I did something um, incorrectly. Amazing. And I really want people to focus on um, Ash's um, like vocab and interest as a business owner because so many people are stuck in businesses where they're not like they don't and they just maybe how's the best way to say this they think that what's going on in their office is very normal and I want to really showcase like this is really healthy business ownership and what should be happening in offices and um, what like what a healthy business owner looks like. I, I'm, well, I'm, I'm just trying to excite you. That's a big compliment. <laughs> no, it is, but there's just so many toxic offices out there and people just, I, I don't want property managers to ever think that what's happening in their office is normal or that's what all bosses are like. Like it's so nice for them to really have an insight into other people's businesses to go, oh, okay, that sounds really good. Like I, that makes sense. And that's what I should be experiencing in my office. Like I just really want to show people sort of like that insights. That's why the conversations are so important to have so that people that are listening, if they are in a in a um, environment where um, they're not experiencing that same sort of level of support, I guess it's really good for them just to hear from someone else that I Yeah, guess. I mean like because I come from a sales background, um, you know, I get a different side of it when it comes to property management. So I refer a client to property management. If the property management office, property manager is not working well, um, my client gets disgruntled and then they come back to me. So part of the, the, the whole setup was how am I going to set up at one of those offices and there's there's obviously great offices out there where they do great property management and their clients are very happy. And those sales agents flourish because their property management service is good. And so I came into it with trying to figure out how I can do that, where, um, you know, what do I need to do in order to, when I do get property managers, um, for them to be happy to work with my clients and the tenants and and long term, because that's a, a pretty much in my opinion. You might disagree, but I think that's maybe the biggest complaint I get I've had from landlords and tenants mm. that just I don't know who I'm dealing with. Yeah. So I'm trying to create something where the person would want to come and be like, "Yep, this is a great working environment. The systems are good. You know, you're always going to have." Um, you know, tenants that you don't like dealing with or landlords that you don't like dealing with, like that's just human nature and you're always going to have complaints. That's the business we're in. Uh, property management is majority, uh, you know, they, they don't really call you to give you great news or give yeah. you any facts. They normally call you to say something's wrong. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm trying to create an environment where um, where we can, even though people are getting those complaints, they go, oh, it's, it's pretty good here though. Yeah, you know, like you know exactly. exactly. Well, well, I I bag a lot the sales led directors, so that's why I had to highlight that because I shouldn't bag them after speaking to you. You're not going to put a ba banner across this one saying, "Oh, sales sales agent director video." Yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe they're okay. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Um, now, to finish off, I would love to hear whether you have gone into the business of, um, if you've gone into business ownership pretty smoothly or was there any any situation that shocked you that maybe you weren't prepared of that you should have been better prepared being a business owner? Uh, I don't want to uh, give anyone any false hopes, but I was quite lucky. I was, I hit the ground running. Um, I, the property management side has gone from strength to strength. I'd say the last six, nine months have been really tough. I know that's been across the board for a lot of agencies, just like kind of zero growth. Obviously I'm trying to, I'm in a growth phase. I'm trying to grow so that I can get to a point where I have people helping me and I'm not full, like, you know, like trying to take a holiday right now. It's quite difficult. 
right? Mm -hmm. Um, Because I don't have that person to lean on. So I'm lucky I've got people in the industry that have offered to help. So if I did need to go away, you know, they're on call and things like that. So, but that's still daunting. But besides kind of those little, you know, things which you have to figure out anyways, it's been pretty, pretty smooth for me, to be honest. Yeah, I had a very smooth um, business ownership journey as well, so it's um, it is quite normal. The what? So, what do you think you were doing before that made it easier for you to hit the ground running? Was it your? Was it the database? Was it your? Like, what was it that you were doing before that you think made it so easy? Um, I, yeah, it's probably like the network, the the database and the network. Um, I've I've never been like the highest selling agent or um, you know doing you know, everyone talks about the gross commission and how many properties they sell and everything like that. But what I've always done is I've always been really good at when I deal with someone, um, I've always been really good at like kind of maintaining that relationship and um, giving them, uh, I think, good service. Um, And so I retain a lot of my clients. Um, They call me when they want to sell it and rent it, all of that. So when I made the transition, it felt really natural for a lot of them to go, yeah, of course, 100% you're our, like, you're our guy for life. You know, I hope that that actually means that. But, you know, a lot of people just, you know, within like two weeks, I had 20 managements because it was just the matter of a phone call and saying, hey, I've started my own thing, letting you know we're doing property management and sales. I'm going to handle the property management for now, like full transparency. Um, and, you know, inspections are going to be done by these these people, et cetera, et cetera. And they go, yeah, cool. As soon as our agreement ends, like we're over. Yeah. Um, so, um, not like poaching, by the way, just, no, yeah, but yeah. like actual clients of mine that, you know, that wanted to support me. So that's the main reason it was, um, smooth. And I made a point to keep overheads super low. I ran the business from my laptop for at least eight or nine months. I only got an office space because it was offered to me by, by a friend at a really good rate. Um, but yeah, for the first, I reckon, seven, eight months, I literally ran the business from like an, a laptop and I had like a key safe and that's yeah. it. And I went to coffee shops and, you know, wherever I needed to do work. Like, yeah. So that, you know, just keeping overheads low, it's going to obviously benefit, keep things smooth because you're not, you're not worried about where the next um, commission is coming from or how quickly you have to get to a hundred properties or any of that. Um which, you know, I know some people start businesses and they've got these massive, massive overheads and that would be, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. No, no. So, and it is very easy to start with very low overheads, absolutely. Um, and I think um, it sounds like that your reputation was really strong before um, and your networks, and which is obviously your reputation as well. And I, um, I will finish off just by saying that, um, and this was a conversation I was having with someone this morning about reputation. I was listening to um, a coach and he was talking about as a business owner, when you sell your business, you're left with you know cash from a business um, sale but then that's all you've got then then what happens and he was talking about the um, importance of reputation like your personal branding your reputation is the only thing that you keep like you keep that forever whether you are in real estate whether you decide to be a hairdresser in five years whatever it is you have that forever. So we need to spend more time on our reputation, our personal branding, um, because that is going to look after us for the whole, you know, for the rest of our lives. And if you decide not to do uh, property anymore, but want to get into, you know, merchandise, um, big, big, bad move. But (laughs) I don't think you earn as much money doing that. But if you were, um, you know, your reputation brand, you'll still succeed. Like you will succeed in everything you do if you have a good personal brand and reputation. It just happens that, you know, you and I do real estate. But in all honesty, we could probably both go do whatever we wanted to do and still succeed. I hope so. I certainly know you would. Um, I think you would too. <laughs> um, yeah, no, just on on, on that um yeah, you're hundred percent correct. And I just, uh, the reputation for me, um, was, is always more important than doing more sales or having a bigger rent roll. Um, because you do see it really good agents and offices and things like that. They want to grow and everyone should want to grow. I agree with that. 
Uh, but if you do it too quickly um, or in the wrong way, you'll sacrifice what, you know, you'll sacrifice what got you to where you were. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, maybe it's conservative, but um, I think if you get to a point where you're so big and you've made a lot of sacrifices to get that big, then um, although you might have this big machine, uh, kind of it'll always have massive turnover um, because the reputation of the business and whoever's running it is is shot. So to keep it where it is, you're just going to be churning instead of, um, you know, getting to that. Maybe it takes you longer, but you've done it in every uh, every step of the way people have felt that you're taking care of them and um, your, your churn's less. So that's yeah. kind of yeah. what, what I'm trying to do. Yeah, very sustainable, I think, um, sustainable business ownership. Well, Ash, it was lovely to chat to you. So to jump over and check out um, Wide Arch, I always love a good Instagram page, um, head over and um, give him a follow as well. And if there are any questions, I, I speak on your behalf. I'm sure you'll be fine if anyone wants to reach out with a random question um, on like business ownership or on branding or just to get a bit of, you know, advice. I love a chat. I'm a, I just love a chat. So people call me anytime. Yeah, excellent. I'll stop what I'm doing and I'll just chat. But they need to be aware that I don't stop talking. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the male version of me. I'm the same. Um, hence why I just press record and started recording because it's easier that way. See how time efficient that is instead of having like the chit chat before and then repeating yourself. It's wonderful. <laughs> All right. Thank <laughs> you so much. I'll speak to you soon. Sensor Global saves lives with automatic compliance and manages smoke alarms, gas and water leak detection with 24-7 remote management. It provides complete control, reduced risks and improved compliance for property managers. To find out more, speak to Anthony Booth or head over to sensorglobal.com.